Eddies. Hello and welcome to the third lesson on command tactics and strategy. Today we'll be turning our focus on weapon focus. <laughs> yeah. Or you could say targeting priority. The topic is a rather important one since degrading the enemy's combat capability purposefully, although happening naturally as you achieve kills, is a sure way to limit your own losses. Before we can go blow stuff up, ah. we need to establish what poses the highest threat to our forces. For that we'll apply what we've learned in lesson 1, where we've talked about ship rolls. Picket screener, counters small craft. Use larger ships than them to engage favorably. Usually screening weapons on them are untargetable, so be prepared to liberate the whole ship. Hunter destroyer, counters larger craft. Use squadrons of small picket ships and wings of fighters depending on the specific hunter destroyer to hold them away from your value targets and finish with light artillery if necessary. Brawler, counters non-brawler similarly sized craft. You can harass them with fighters and small hunter destroyers to disable them and give an advantage to your line ships when they inevitably get engaged by them. Carrier, counters any ships lacking AA. Remember to blink plenty against them and destroy them with what you have available. Ship of the Line Battleship Counters lighter ships, since they are well rounded, they don't have big weaknesses, but are more vulnerable to small craft. The best way to deal with them would be fighters supported by tanky capital ships like brawlers. Artillery Counters larger, slower craft. Bypass the enemy line with fast ships if possible or use counter battery fire to take them out. Kaboom. Just hold your horses a little longer, we'll almost at the blowing shit up part. We know what goes against what, so now we can go through the targeting order. 1. Repair ships. As you might be able to guess, repair ships are first on the list. These ships can come in a variety of flavors, one big one would be fighter support ships, capable of rearming and repairing fighters and gunships. The only exception to that priority is when the enemy has little fighters in the case of fighter repair and large capital ships in the case of ship repair. Big ships with vulnerable hardpoints that can be targeted by hull cannot be repaired by infield repairs. 2. Hard counter ships. If a particular ship counters your composition so hard it paralyzes your ability to execute your battle plan, it's the next in line. Hard countering is industry slang term for being very good at opposing your battle plan and or ships and weapons. It's a rather abstract term, and you'll have to develop a sense for it, as I can't explain it well. It's an instinct. Some examples of hard counters would be Nebula Bees against Victory 1s, or DP-20s against Interceptor 5s or Karak Cruisers. Remember that not all ships need to be completely destroyed to prevent them from doing their job. On some ships, you can focus fire on the subsystem that provides the vessel with the inconvenient function. 3. Critical Hardpoints Hiding under this are all the hardpoints that aren't part of category 2, but provide the ship with very important functionality. Hardpoints that are included here are shield generators, engines, hangers, tractor beams. These hardpoints aren't absolutely useful, i.e. their usefulness depends on your fleet and tactic. You need to evaluate which ones actually help the enemy meaningfully. The most basic decisions here are as follows. Would the enemy have shields left after the time you need to destroy the generators? Sometimes your ion and laser firepower can drain the shields faster than you can kill the shield generators. If that's the case, destroying them is redundant. Does most of your firepower pierce shields? If so, the whole DPS gain from destroying shield generators will be minimal. Will the enemy try to move at all? If you're in a rather static line battle, your enemy would be unlikely to move anywhere. This can change if you plan on retreating one of your ships to recharge shields. The enemy might elect to go for the kill on it. Then, their engines are an important target. Are the fighters any good against your fleet? If you have a lot of AA already, or the hangars house fighters that can't really hurt your plan, like A-wings against capital ships, or type bombers against other fighters, you won't gain much by killing the hangar. Does the enemy have any reserve fighters left in that hangar? To answer this you might need to use more deductive reasoning than usual. Consider how many fighters have you killed, how long the ship in question have been in battle, and how many fighters are embarked on it in total. If you've killed most of the reserve, don't bother shooting the hangar. Can the enemy tractor beam hold your ship? Generally, tractor beams can hold only ships smaller than the vessel on which the projector is installed. If they can't hold you, there's no point in destroying the tractor. Warning, interdictors, due to their grav wells, can hold massive ships in their tractor beams, even capitals. Do you even want to move? 
The tractor beam only stops you from moving. If you plan on staying put, it won't interfere in that. 4. Soft counter ships. Soft counter is an industry term for something that is good against your game plan but doesn't debilitate your ability to execute it. A good example might be Bakura destroyers against other cruisers. Their heavy assault missiles hurt cruiser-sized ships plenty, but it's not like you will get deleted from existence in a matter of seconds by them. Again, it's more of an instinct and I can't explain it any better. Yeah, I know, I suck. 5. The rest. That is, anything not covered above. All too often one can fall into a pattern of either always going for a hard point or always going for the hole. That's a big oversight. This choice should be carefully made, taking into consideration the available weapons, the enemy's armor and health, your position, and a bunch of other things. When tasking weapons to hardpoints, one has to remember that all shots hitting an already destroyed hardpoint will do no further damage to the ship. Couple that with differing projectile speed, and you can see that some weapons are more efficient at shooting hardpoints than others. Generally, you first want to look at the ship's overall health. The weaker the ship, the smaller the weapons you will want to use against them. Then you need to evaluate the projectile speed. If that's low and the fire rate is relatively high, such that you'd fire again before the first projectile hits, you probably want to shoot that at the hull, especially if the projectile one or two shots the hard point. The big exception here are proton torpedoes. Commonly, you'll need these weapons to punch through the shield of a ship and disable a critical hard point. In that case, you can task just enough firepower to destroy a hard point in a single volley, disregarding overkill due to fire rate. As an example, it takes around 20 medium torpedoes to destroy a shield generator on a capital ship and about 6 large heavy torpedoes to do the same. Imagine this, you're outnumbered by ISDs and if you don't do something, your capital ships are gonna get overwhelmed. But you've got an ace in the hall, a full wing of X-wings. You just need to do this right to turn the engagement around. This concept refers to how you should disable vulnerable shield generators on ships using shield-piercing weaponry, mainly on fighters. For the sake of simplicity, we're gonna assume that you're taking care of seed adequately enough to perform this tactic. At the beginning of the engagement, signal your ships to fire on a ship with shields you don't plan on destroying. Then task your shield-piercing vessels to destroy the shield generator on the most pressing enemy ship as per targeting priority rules outlined above. For this, I recommend using smaller ships that are no larger than frigate-sized. You'll see we'll need good maneuverability and the ability to rapidly navigate among other fighting ships. Right after the shields on that ship are dead, switch your fire to the next available target and smash the shield generators on it to smithereens. At this point, your turbolaser ships should be just about done with their ship, so signal them to fire on the hull of the recently deshielded ship. Repeat this pattern until no shield generators are available or you need to task your shield piercing ships to something more pressing. That's it. Note, you'll need to have potent enough shield piercing capability so that it takes roughly the same amount of time to destroy the shield gens on a ship and to destroy the previously deshielded ship with the rest of your fleet. It's a balancing act. That covers the basics of targeting priorities. Thus, it's time to conclude this lesson. You can leave a comment with the next topic you want me to cover in the War College. So remember to like if you liked it, comment if you have anything to add or ask, and as always, see you next time. Take care.